Salud. En las dos, Okay, boleh, boleh, boleh nak. Sorry, saya hantar. Okay. Sorry. Uh, Prof, uh, can you hear me clearly? Yes, yes, sure. Okay, sure. I can hear you clearly. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, before we start our event today, I need your kind of pressure to kind of pressure to switch off your handphone to switch off or switch to silent mode. So I don't know our session, okay? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Distinguished guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the National Anthem Negaraku and Biro Wanda. Please rise. No. 
Ladies and gentlemen, please have a seat. <coughs> Good morning to everyone. In the name of Allah, the most graceful and most merciful. Yang Musa Professor Dr. Hassan Abu Bakar, Dean of Osmanyu Abdullah Green School of Business, online with us today. Uh, Professor Dr. Subramanian Suryan Malu, Deputy Dean of OYG Institute, Dr. Francis Chua Chimwee, Program Director of OYG Institute, and all of our distinguished students. Uh, okay, first of all, let's welcome you to OYGSP, formerly known as Postgraduate Studies Unit in MCOB and EM Family. Congratulations on your research today. Alhamdulillah, uh, praise Allah for the opportunity to bring us together this morning. We are very grateful to have you guys here today. Without further delay, it is a great uh, pleasure that we call upon Yang Bursa Prof. Uh, Dr. Hassan Abubakar, our Dean of Otman Yogyakarta Creative School of Business, to give his welcoming remark. Over to you, bro. All right, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Nan. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum and very good morning, uh, Prof. Subra, uh, Dr. Francis, uh, OYA GSP colleague and beloved student. Thank you so much for uh, inviting me uh, to give some uh, welcome uh, remark. Uh, to all new students, uh, welcome to the beautiful campus. Uh, I hope you, jo uh, you enjoy the scenery of uh, uh, the campus and of course the facilities in uh, OYA GSB building. Uh, as you know, we we are the highly regulated business school. Uh, we are accredited by ACSB, uh, and we also have AMBA. We also have Simon. We have uh, also Idamba. E e e so all this accreditation means that we are committed to high quality business and management education. So you are joining uh, 150 best business management pro program in the world. Eh? So to date, we are ranked uh, 151 uh, in terms of business uh, and management field. And we, we I'm, I'm, I'm proud to say we are the largest business school in Malaysia. And we also one and only business school that that uh, listed in global MBA. So I hope that uh, you will find your journey, education journey in uh, OYA GSP to be meaningful. And on my last remark, please communicate with us uh, should you need further uh, assistance with regards to your education journey. So we are here to assist you to achieve your goal and your mission uh, when you join OYA. So I always say this, my last remark, once you are OYA, you join OYA, you always be part of our family uh, for now, right? So with that, thank you so much, and I welcome you all to OYA GSB. Thanks. Over to you, back, Nat. Thank you so much, Prof. Thank you for the welcoming remarks. Okay, distinguished guests. Now let's welcome Dr. Francis Chuan Wei, our program director of OYA GSB Sinto, for the program administration administrative administration briefing. Sorry, Doctor, the floor is yours. Okay, very good morning. 
All right, so first of all, on behalf of the Graduate School, Osmani Wapala Graduate School of Business, would like to uh, welcome each and every one of you. All right, so today is your first day as a UMS and also a graduate student, right? Okay, so I will start uh, my briefing. Basically, uh, my name is uh, Dr. Francis, right? And I'm the academic director for uh, OYA GSB or Osmanyo Abdullah Graduate School of Business, Sinto. Okay. okay. All right, so, um, <clears throat> so probably some of you uh, might still be confused, huh? Well, sometimes you heard College of Business, then sometimes you heard OYA oh, yeah, GSB, then sometimes you are, well, you are basically part of School of Business or School of Economics Finance. Okay, so I, I'll put it this way. In this particular university, we have a uh, three big cluster. Okay, we have 24, 26 schools that was divided uh, to three cluster, which is uh, number one, College of Business, the largest one. And then we have a uh, College of Art and Science, and then we have a uh, College of Law and uh, International Study, Law Government International Study, so uh, COGIS, CAS, and COB. All right, and each of these clusters, they have their own graduate schools. Right, so in CAS, you have Awang Hat Saleh, right, in uh, COGIS or College of Law Government uh, International Studies, you have uh, Ghazali Sabi Graduate School, and in COB, you have Osman Yop Abdullah Graduate School of Business, right? So from these clusters, they have respective graduate schools, and beneath that graduate schools, you have your respective schools, right? So the role of uh, graduate school, especially over GSB in Sinto, what myself and uh, Madam Nath or even uh, Prof. Subra do is we are policies implementers. All right, so consider this. You check in, you come and see us. You check out, you come and see us as well. But in between your process, you deal with your schools. If you have causes, you have problems, you go back to your schools, you talk to your program coordinators, and I expect you're going to see them soon, right? But for the graduate school, we are basically the policy implementers. We manage your enrollment. Right, we make sure that you pay money on time. That's the most important, whether you study or not, it doesn't matter. Right, okay. So, uh, the graduate school basically, where myself is here, is overseeing these five schools. So, if you have PhD in finance, you go back to your school of economics and finance. If you have PhD in management or masters of science management, you go back to your school of business. And if you are accounting students, you are going back to Tungku Internet Finance. Uh, school of Accountancy, and if you have uh, doing uh, logistics or operation management, you go back to STML. Is that fine? Right, so you have the respective schools, but anything about your study, for example, right, you have problems with your health that you need deferment, you have to come back to us. As I say, check in, check out belongs to us. But if you say that I, I, I'm not sure what subject to take or how many subjects I can take, or I think I want to request for a recheck for my marks and all those things, you go back to your schools. All right? Okay, thanks. Lovely. Okay, and uh, this is basically the management. Uh, I, I'm proud to say that, well, uh, as compared to uh, the other two graduate schools, Ghazali Shafi Graduate School and also Awaha Saleh Graduate Schools, which is basically based in uh, Simtok. Oya GSV is a little bit special. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Uh, we have, how am I supposed to say? We, we have two operation sites. On one side, uh, Oya GSV is operating in KL, where just now you saw the Dean is basically live from KL. So Prof. Hassan Abubaka is the Dean of OYA GSB, is operating in KL, and they have their own uh, academic program. They have their MBAs there, right? They have their PhD there, they have their Doctor of Business Administration. Whereas in OYA GSB Sinto, uh, you have me and also my superior, Professor Dr. Subra, which 
basically overseeing the five schools just now, right? So we are managing the 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 the, the program for the five schools basically overseeing because each of the schools have their program coordinators, and we are we call ourselves the OER GSB Sinto. So OER GSB is big, right? You have to differentiate between OER GSB KL and Sinto. So in Sinto. The person in charge here is, apart from the dean, is uh, Prof. Subra, and I'm the one who's overlooking on all the academics issue, whether it's master's or PhD program. And then I was supported by uh, my chief operating officer, Madam Nadia, which is the assistant registrar, right? So most of the time you will be dealing, I think, with, uh, unless all the clerks and uh, officer, then you will be dealing with Madam Nadia in case uh, there's need to uh, what we call elevate your issue to a high level, then you will come and see me or even prosper. All right. So, as I said, check in and check out. Right. So these are the persons that you might be dealing with. Okay. In the case of uh, you have issue with your admission records and everything, for example, uh, for most of the time, I think master student doesn't have any issue. Most of them are PhD students, right? They activate and then suddenly they went missing. They went for holiday because no class and everything. Then uh, you will be receiving call from either uh, Madam uh, No Faiza to remind you saying that the, the semester is there, right? And in case that uh, you accidentally pregnant, then you need for deferment. Then you're going to see Mr. Mohammed Irwan to request for letter, letter to extend your BD letter to delay or to defer or sort of things. So these are the persons that you're going to deal with that, right? Okay, let's say smooth journey, one and a half year, master's, three years, PhD, graduate of nine. Then you will be meeting with either my handsome young man here, right, uh, Mr. Juan Zafri, or you will be met, uh, meeting with Madam, uh, Madam, uh, Madam uh, there's no check here. So Madam No Hashima, they are the person who is going to in charge about your graduation, everything about scrolls, everything about payment for convocation, these are the person. Okay, next. Ah, this is the person that probably I don't think you like to see that. Okay. So, Madam Faiza is here. Okay. So, about your deferment, about everything, you're going to see it. She's very cute, no worry. Right? Uh, the one that you need to be aware is uh, Madam Hasniza. Uh, she's not here. Huh? Okay. This is the one that is going to call you and say, hey, please pay money. <laughs> All right, she's the one that's going to activate you again. Uh, you have uh, Madam Aziza and Madam uh, Zuriani, both of them are managing on the finance. Okay, so let's say, for example, your PhD students you want to go for proposal defense or viva, right? Then suddenly you will say, Hello, you have still owing you and money, so you need to pay, right? And uh, finally. I think uh, among them, the most, <laughs> the, the strictest lady and the most <laughs> lady in terms of the administrator, Madam Zaida. Uh, this one, I have to warn all those master students by coursework. Okay? Uh, when you add and drop your subject, better be careful. You do mistake, you call her, she will scold you. Okay? She's in charge of scheduling. She's in charge of final exam. And she's the one that you're going to to, to yeah. talk to in the case you want to add or drop any subjects, right? And uh, I don't know whether the, the you are going to bring your habit from the undergraduate to the postgraduate, like for example, first week you go for class topping, right? right? You go in and say, oh, this professor is very strict, I want to change the other class, then you will call Madam Zaida, can I change my class? Okay? Right? So basically, OHSV Sinto, we have a very small team. Right, of course. Respective schools, I, I still have other admins and, and a program chair, but they, they report to the respective deans at the school. But at least at this particular part, as I say, you check in and check out, and we are the person that's going to oversee this. All right? Anything about content of your studies, you have to go back to your respective schools. Okay? Thanks. So, now, the second and most important thing, right? Since you're here, I have to remind you, but I am very convinced that two weeks after you will come back and ask me the same question. Uh, where should I download the form? Where should I get this? Where should I get that? 
All right. So probably one day we need to send these slides to each and every one. And, and even come and ask Madam Nadia what to do. Then she will back you say, go back and check your slides or handbook. Is there any handbook given? No, uh, online. Online. So the digital handbook. Of course, everyone needs to read. All right. Okay, sources of information where you can actually get all the information. Number one is uh, our website. As what we mentioned by uh, Madam Nadia before, this particular office was uh, named as the Postgraduate Studies Unit or COB before that. All right. So you can go to the website, uh, which is basically psucob.un.edu.my. That is the first page. And then I think you, you, you should be very familiar with this, right? Because at the first, you are a prospective student. You click there to see our programs. Now you have to go to the part where you go for current students. So within that particular section, you can see a lot of things. I can make a calendar. When is the semester start? When the semester will end? And then how you're going to register for yourself, the subjects, and even the timetable is all uploading there. So examination table and for PhD students or uh, master by research students, uh, you want to know about how actually you go about to request for proposal defense or colloquium or viva. There's a section there. And then there are general rules and regulations. And of course, we even provide you the sample of a proposal and guideline. For example, you want to go to colloquium, what are the templates that you can use? They are all available there. Right? Then for international students, you have a section called the visa section. Of course, uh, we do not basically process here. In our office, we have uh, URCs, right? Yeah. yeah. URCs, the international office. For visa. Yes. Yeah. Right? URCs. So you have to go to URCs to get um, the visa renewal. But here, we put up uh, what are the guidelines and, and what are the things that you need to do in order for you to renew your visa, etc., etc. Then finally, in that particular section, another element that you need to pay attention is the download section, right? Because this is where you are going to get all the forms for your study, right? So for example, now you come in and register as uh, in a program of masters, uh, masters, what? masters in finance, let's say, for example. And then after that, two weeks, you regret to say, I better go for management. Then you want to change the program. You cannot simply come in and say, hello, I want to change program. No. I will ask you, where is the form? Then you don't ask me, uh, sir, where should I download the form? I will wait you. Okay? The form out there. If you want to change program, you can have a look there. Or you want to do anything about the study, the forms are there. Okay, for PhD and master by research students, you look at a supervisor, not handsome like me, you want to change to me. You get the form, and then sign. Right? Probably Prof. Subhan say, okay, now you can change. Right. Okay. And then uh, in the case of financial, any any form for financial? No. No. Nothing. Huh? But in contract. Sorry? Everything in, uh, in students portal. Ah, okay. Everything in students portal. So probably here you might want to do some claims or anything you can get. Okay, next one. Okay, so as I said before, right? Uh this is the academic calendar. Okay, excuse me, I got a foot. She says, uh, please give me a minute about changing program for those international students cannot be changed because it will affect your visa. So maintain your program as it is until you Thank you. All right. Okay. So uh, another important thing that you have to always keep in mind is this uh, academic calendar. All right, and uh, I think uh, this academic calendar will be renewed every year. All right, so probably the first thing you need to understand is your intake semester. Huh? Okay, basically, um, I would like to inform that uh, in, in, in an academic year, we have three intakes. Okay, different from other graduate where you have two semesters. For postgraduate, you have three semesters in a year. And the academic semester starts in September and ends in May. So basically, if we go by the cohort, 
you are the last cohort for the 2023 and 2024 academic year right so you have your semester is basically a two three three so three at the end means the third semester right so next year not next year lah, this coming september it will be 24 so two four one because this year is 2024 right then next january will be 242 and 243 so at the present moment we have not finalized the academic calendar for 241 243 so you can only refer to this important date so you can see that uh, basically on the 5th of may those international students should have been arrived in malaysia and uh, registration for you is today the 8th of may right so the last day for you to register for this semester, meaning if you have your friend still thinking ding dong ding dong whether to come here or to go there or to go everywhere, they can still come and register. In case they receive our offer letter, huh, they will come in on the 26th of May. And then uh, you will be seeing your senior starting tomorrow. Okay. So you are not basically like, oh, I'm a new student and uh, we are going to sit in a class where I'm not going to meet my senior at all. The way academic, uh, oh, not academic, the study plan is being designed is that you are expected to join your senior starting Saturday. 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 All right. Today is uh, Wednesday. Eh? So the first class will start on the 11th, yeah, Saturday. So for those the master's program, once you join in, you will get don't get surprised, you'll be meeting your seniors because that, that's how we plan. Right? Okay, so they'll be starting registering uh, for their courses tomorrow, beginning tomorrow. And then uh, another thing that you need to be aware is of course number one, your period of studies. Right? So today you register, start tomorrow onwards, you are students of UM and students of YGSB. Right, and the semester will start from the 9th until the 1st of uh, August, where after 1st of August is your final exam week. Right, and I think the most important thing that I think Madam Nadia want me to say is to look at the last day to settle your payment, which is 10 June. June, eh? sorry, 10 eh? June. 10th of June. You got eyesight problem, Rabun. So 10 it's of June. Uh, 10, 10 of June, one month from now. But they are new students, paid already. So open, huh? <laughs> sure. Ah, okay, no worry. But yeah, lah, now new student next semester, we are going to chase them. Lah. All right. Okay. Then, the another most important thing, huh? you, 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 you have to remember all these dates in case it affects you. For example, right? You have not registered any subject, right? Correct? So this coming Saturday, you're going to have class. So let's say after you go for two weeks, three weeks, then you started like, I'm going to die now. Four subjects per semester, full time, cannot swim. <laughs> I'm going to, uh, what? I'm going to drown. Then you think of withdrawing. Right? Then that's a bad thing. Lah. Think of uh, withdrawing and say, okay, if I withdraw, will I lose my money or will I lose everything or can I get something back? Right? So you have to decide because time is running out. You can request to re withdraw from some subjects with 50% refund if you decide to withdraw latest by the 9th of the line. Okay, there's one there. Okay, last day to withdraw from examination. That means that basically we say withdraw from examination, that means to say, okay, bye bye, thanks, I don't want you. Okay. 9th of July. Okay, after 9th of July, sorry, no refund. You pay, and we got the money. Right? So, 9th of July, you get 50%. Last day to withdraw without deferment, 1st of August. Why? Because the final exam will start on 9th to 22nd of August. Alright? Okay? 
Ah, uh, then the one that I think everyone is looking forward to right, is the semester break. The semester break start 19 of uh, August until 11 of September. Right? So, since this is a trimester system, normally we have a two weeks break. Right? So, 11 night, but you know, 16 night is a holiday as well, right? Okay, and then of course there are some reminders for us to transmit the mark. So you have your semester break on the 11th of September and that is the day you get the result for your first semester. Okay, so like what your senior did, they are going to get their result today, this afternoon, and tomorrow they are going to register the new semester. This is how packed a postgraduate study is because since all of you working, right? And I said, can I finish one year, one year, one year, and then we give you one year, <laughs> right? So don't complain that there is a oh, very short break and everything, no, right? We want you to come in fast and we want to send you out fast as well, <laughs> okay? We don't want you to Malaysia pram dekat sini, kan? Okay, next. Okay, so uh, what do we have to do? Still, we are still following this uh, particular postgraduate academy handbook, right? So you have received the e-copies and uh, you can check uh, on some general guidelines of the universities, then you can look for specifically the outline of your respective programs, right? Masters by coursework, what are the subjects and all those things. You can always refer to this, right? Even we as the policy implementers, when we have uh, encountered problems that you come to us, we don't have answer, we also refer to this. Unless there's specific new things that was never being encountered before, then we have to decide in a high level meeting. Okay, next. All right, another one. Anyone aware of this? Have you ever seen me doing live? on Facebook. No. So it, it seems like our, our our Facebook live promotion is not effective huh? because none of them come in because they saw me online. I thought they saw me online. Wow, very handsome, I registered. No. Okay. All right. So this is uh, our Facebook. Please give it a like. Please follow because most of the information will be managed by myself and uh, Mr. Zapri and Madam Nadia. So some of you might have uh, do some inquiries about uh, your master's program using the message uh, function here as well, right? We entertain some of you. And uh, another thing we would like you to follow is because uh, we have this, what we call it as a postgraduate talk series. You see, all right, there's something that, especially for research based students, uh, we acknowledge that maybe some of the techniques or methods in doing research is not being well covered in class. Therefore, sometimes we invite uh, experts from schools to conduct a postgraduate talk series. And one of the reasons, sometimes we intend to do it before COVID, we do it face to face because students, they stay here. But after COVID, with your generation, I think everyone will be asked, why no online? So we do it online. Okay? So we do it online. But of course, I think in terms of efficiency, efficacy, there is a bit lacking as compared to you sit here and everyone doing this, right? But this is how things move. So. Uh, at least I can I can assure you that at least uh, every month we'll have one. So throughout the year, we have uh, what we call it a 12 series of talk series. Okay? All right? And then another thing that you... Okay. 
when someone someone is going to the house at least get that door Okay, that, that, that's one. Uh, next one, Zafri. Okay, we also have a Telegram channel. Right? But this Telegram channel, you can only see, you cannot respond. So it is some sort like... Uh, uh, announcement platform lah, Zafri, but can we know berapa orang dekat dalam, how many we have inside then? We don't know. Mm, uh, 400 something. Right, we have 400 over students, but the general population of our graduate schools across the five schools is 1,400 something lah. So, uh, yeah, this is an information center, but the only thing is you cannot ask questions because we do not allow anyone to say anything. Right, so probably another medium is uh, the Facebook where you can basically ask questions down there in the comment section. Right, so there are, there are, there are, there are two platforms. We, 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 we do not do WhatsApp, right, because we, we, we don't put up WhatsApp because uh, we don't have a specific account for that. But for Telegram, yes, we can do that. Next one. Okay, now let's talk business, academic rules and regulations. Okay. Next. First thing first. This is uh, the concern from the industry. Okay. Attire. All right. Um, I I do know that at the postgraduate level, we shouldn't uh, really treat you like an undergraduate, right? But still, we need to remind you about uh, when going to class, you need to have a proper attire. Lah. Okay? Proper attire in the sense that we don't expect you like be like an undergraduate, huh? right? 37, 38 Celsius and you wear the tie and no. Right? You can have a flexible uh, attire. Probably, I think uh, you, you at least should have, for, for men, you should have wear a t-shirt with collars. Lah. Okay. And then for ladies, I think no problems with the Muslims. You will always look the same. Right. But for international students, China students, um, you need to be aware of your attire. Lah. Okay. And, and I think the not not to say I'm conservative, but it's, it's best to cover everything. Okay, um, no mini skirt is allowed. Okay, no sleeper is allowed, and worse still, no pajamas is allowed. Okay, you don't say that. Ah, doctor, my class is three to nine p.m. I think I wear pajamas lah. After class, I go back and sleep. No. Okay. Track shoot in class is not advisable. People don't say right. So, for example, this guy is wearing a white t-shirt, fine. T-shirt like that and the slack is fine. But a white t-shirt and a, a track suit, then was it okay? You are going to sports center or you're coming to class? Okay. So probably I think uh, let's see, it's okay, okay. T-shirt like that, round neck, I'm not advising. So better with what well, we call it quality, right? Looks more professional. Lah. At least you are a master student, you work in the industry, right? So consider the key term semi formal. Right? Okay. But if we if you if it's out of the uh, of course it says here out of the uh, office hour, and of course your class is Saturday is not office hour, right? But still please. Right, uh, where, where properly? I, I will just say this because um, the one that is going to deal with you is your lecturer, right? And they have different kinds of behavior. Okay, some of them are very particular. So, in the case that you, he, he or she requested you to go out from the class, 
Porque no quedaba todo por decir, why is asking me to leave? I told you today, yeah. Right? I, 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 I couldn't manage that because there's a thousand over lecturers here. Right? And each of them have different kind of expectation. For me, I'm fine. Okay? For me, I'm fine because I have a, maybe some say global view, right? It's international. Right? You cannot expect uh, uh, students to comply, but some say, say no, you will, yes. Yeah? old school and new school huh? okay next okay so this is the flow for your semester today you register then beginning tomorrow onwards until 16 of may you can register for your course All right later i'll explain a little bit about uh, full-time student what is the maximum classes you can take and part-time student what is the maximum class that you can take and you're going to have a study from 10th of may until 1st of August, but at least for now, we do know that all your classes is Saturday and Sunday. Not yet any class on Friday, okay? And as I said before, the last day for you to withdraw with some refund is on the 9th of July, but the final day for you to decide whether you want to continue or not continue with the particular subject is on the 1st of August, because on the 2nd to 15th of August is our final exam, and your result will be released on the 11th of September, which is not a good date, lah. Nine one one. Okay, next. All right. So this semester you are safe. We are here to assist you. Since you are a new student, right? So we present our kindness to you. Next semester you call, hello, I want to register. No, do it yourself. Okay. So next semester you must always remember you need to register within one week of the new semester or else we will have a penalty for you all right so not registering with the stipulated time without prior approval sorry i haven't changed that huh? the director or probably in here is the deputy dean huh? all right uh prof Subra. we can actually stop you from registering this semester all right and again money must be paid one month so the academic calendar basically stated when is the last day you need to pay all right Failing to settle your fee within the period will result in activation. And in order to make yourself alive again, we need to do CPR, but you need to pay us 200. Yeah, you died already. So we do CPR for you. And pay us 200, then you're alive. Okay? So activate your status and then have 200 again. Next. All right. If you want to defer, okay, you need to apply to the deed. Or for your GSV, or probably here, the dean might say, okay, Prof. Subra as a deputy dean has the permission to approve or disapprove your uh, deferment of study, right? There are two types of uh, deferment now, huh? one that is counted and one that is not counted. What means counted and what means not counted? Okay, I put it this way, okay? Um, each of your academic program, you have your lifespan. Okay, so for master's coursework, I think the maximum you can go is three years. For PhD, maximum you can go for full time is five years and part time is seven years. All right, so along this way, we don't know, five years is a long year, seven years is a long year. Okay, then there will be ups and downs. You might fall sick, right? You might suffer from a broken relationship. No one knows about that, right? So many things. So what it means here is that, well, upon consideration, we will consider when you apply for deferment, if it's due to a health issue, we can give you deferment, and that deferment is not counted as part of the time frame of your study. You get know what I mean? So meaning, let's say, okay, you are now in your fourth semester and you have some health issue. So you said, I want to defer for one semester. And we give approval saying that that deferment is not counted. That means to say, the next semester when you come back, you are semester four. You finish one, two, three. 
this semester is the fourth one, but you send us the letter and say you are sick and we approve your deferment. So this is not counted as a progressing semester. Next time you come back, you are only at the fourth. But if it's a non-counted deferment, we give you deferment, but next time you come back, you are student semester five. Understand? So you cannot simply when we see. Right? The common problem that we see is number one, health issue, number two is no money. I have to be frank. So you come and say, uh, no money, you cannot pay, so I want to defer. Yeah, never mind, you defer. But we count. So what does it mean? Okay, for PhD and Master by Research students, the rule says that you need to defend your proposal in semester four. So one, two, three, and done this semester, you're supposed to defend, then you ding dong, ding dong, is it? Cannot lah, you know, apply for defer. Reason, no money. Next semester, fifth semester, you cannot activate a student because we will stop you. You need to seek your supervisor approval saying that now you are ready to defend. But if you come and say, no, due to health issue, I'm pregnant, or I fall sick, or I got COVID, or everything, then you think it's logical, then you save yourself one time, lah, because next time you're semester four, so you got second time. Okay? So this is what I mean. All right, so how long can the deferment be? You can apply for deferment for consecutive of three semesters, three trimesters. Meaning to say, today register, tomorrow send in deferment, next year come back. One, two, three. Reason? Sit this. Okay, no lah. We don't want that, huh? we hope everyone is helpful. Uh, so, the maximum you can go is continuously trimester, or the other way around is along the way you can take three times. Okay, unless you have a very severe issue that you say I need to defer for one year, then we will look at all the medical reports and everything. Or else, let's say, for example, you say, ah, no, this semester I register, next semester I'm going to get married. And then you defer one semester, you have two more times. Okay, but depending on whether it is counted or not counted. Okay, next, Jeffrey. Okay, can you change your program? We say yes, but you need to pay a non-refundable processing fee of 200. Okay, and you're allowed only once. Okay, once in your study. If you are a coursework student that you think you want to change the program, you need to at least finish one semester first. Okay, so for example, uh, let's say I took SVM, uh, this is where I am coming from. You have registered Master of Human Resource Management. And then suddenly you go and say, oh, very boring, I want to change to Master of Science Management. Right? You can, but you need to finish at least one semester. Okay? You need to finish your first semester MHIM. Next semester, you can go for your uh, change of program, Masters of Science um, Management. Right? Research-based program. Okay, I think uh, the, the, the one example I can give is for students coming from TISA. PhD in accounting and then PhD in information system. system. Okay, PhD IS, IF, accounting information system and PhD in uh, conventional accounting. First semester going ding dong ding dong, no, no lah. My topic is more uh, related to information system, I'm looking at digital transformation sort of things. Then you only realize that no, master accounting is not suitable or in the case you met with another professor who is expert in IS, then you are thinking of changing. This is what I need to do. Okay. All right. And it must be approved by the dean of the school. Okay. The dean of schools is not dean of OJSB, JSB, eh? your respective schools. You need to apply. Yeah. Once approved, you will come to us, we will change it for you. As we said here, we are policy implementers. Okay, next. Yes. 
Okay. So not about program, but about the mode. Do they come in confidently say I want to do full time? Okay. Then this Saturday, Saturday class, what three hours? Can? Three hours and a half. Ah, three and a half hours. So happily register Saturday, eight a.m. until twelve p.m. Then another class, one or two p.m. until five. Saturday, say nine. After two weeks, surrender. So you cannot, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot. Four Saturday, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot. Right? Because of the assignment and expectation, you know, I cannot, I cannot. I want to slow down a bit. Want to change to part time. You can do it once. Right? PhD student, same thing. First, second semester, take subjects, no worry. Third semester, no class. Supervisor also no call. Happily enjoy it. Right? Rare. Right. For example, I take this year, 2024. Chinese New Year, right? January, February? February, right? Hari Raya? April. Okay, after this, I'm calling What else? Raya Haji. Raya Haji. Ah, this is where you ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. PhD student. Right? Raya, another two weeks, but two weeks before the mood come in already. But remember, your semester is progressing. It's not two semesters. Two semester system very, very enjoyment because you've got three months holiday, right? But PhD program every day is holiday. No one cares what. Your supervisor, they have different methods. For me, I don't care about student. You should be disciplined. Don't expect me to call you. You need to call me and tell me what is the progress. If I call you, you are in trouble. Correct? Right? Well, this one, Malaysia, the most, okay, China student, you don't know. Chinese. China, how many holidays per year? Very limited, right? Yeah. But their, their holiday, they go for two weeks. That's it. Singapore, like it though, Malaysia, everyday holiday. And this is the problem. Oh, suddenly in the blink of eye, I forced myself already. Cannot pity. It. Never mind. Lah. I find what we call Thailand Hayat. Oh, if change to part time, I can drag until seven semester only PD. Ah, okay, you can do that. Allow only once. I have not seen someone from part time change to full time. But I have seen a lot from full time change to part time because they want to drag the oxygen, you know. Oh, I can breathe. All right. So you can do one next. Okay, so this is what I mean. You have your time frame. For each of the program, I don't say PhD, yeah, because you do PhD because some of you know, senior tell you see, I do my PhD for 10 years only, I grab. Then during convocation, uh, suddenly the reporter never catch the first class, catch the one. Suffer for 10 years, got PhD, bravo. No, we give you maximum seven years only. Okay? And also some sometimes we question, uh, if you do PhD for 10 years, your topic obsolete already. Right? Right? For example, many years back, we have accounting students suffer. When Malaysia implement GST, everyone can't bantai GST. Not even three years, GST bantai, everyone gone missing. They have to change, right? So the validity and feasibility of the PhD topic, they have time frame. So for master students, right? Today you come, next year bye-bye. Yeah, next year November, I'm expecting you to graduate early. Very fast one. But PhD student, I have seen you for many years, huh? Yeah, doctor. Even my PhD student, since 2016 until today, still still surviving. What to do? Right. Okay, so masters by coursework and mixed work, maximum you got nine semesters. Part time, you can go up to five years. A masters only, you do your masters like doing PhD five years. Okay, never mind, you do another five years, then another PhD for seven years. You want to do that? Go on, huh? hit and run, huh? Okay. If you are master by research, anyone master by research here? Yes. Okay. Minimum you can finish two years, maximum three years. Okay, if you are part-time, again we go for five years. Next one, PhD. Ah. So PhD, 
We give you maximum five years, part time seven years. Okay, 21 trimester, but in the blink of five only. Really, I tell you, as a supervisor, I didn't even realize. I thought, hey, I tell you, last year register only, right? Yes, doctor. But this year already four semester, very fast, you know. Because one year, three semester, coming, four already. Hey, you are supposed to go a proposal defense. Yes. Okay, so this is the time frame you need to bear in mind. Next. Okay, proposal defense. Now, this is important for master by research and also PhD student. All right? For full time student, you should be defending your proposal 18 months after your registration. It's better than getting pregnant, right? Pregnant, you need to deliver in the 10 months. Right. But we give you time to produce your thesis baby 18 months. Longer than that. The level of suffering, I think, is the same. Lah. One suffer stomach, one suffer your head. Right? Okay? That's why I say many of the students full-time, they change to part-time. Why? Because for part-time, two years. 24 months. We don't count by semester. Huh? Okay? So if you imagine 18 months, it's more like, okay, four semester 16. Correct? Four. Five. Five. Ah, five. Five. One semester, four months. Ah, four and a half months. Uh, 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 yeah, four and a half semester. Okay? But that is your date of proposal defense. You understand me? You need to defend on the 18 months. But your submission? Your reviewer need time to read five weeks, so you need to cut back from 18 months. You cannot pull up only, you have to cut count back. So, like maybe in the end of third semester, you already need to submit. Then only you can proposal defend on your fourth semester. Alright? For master by research. Today register. Next year today, proposal defend. Very fast. But I belong Hari Raya Haji. I belong lagi Pesta Tanglong. I belong Christmas lagi. I belong di Pauli dengan Dr. Subra lagi. Tapi lah. <laughs> okay? For part time, one year. Okay? Alright, next. Okay, uh, balik, balik, balik. Okay, but you must remember uh, 18 months, right? The first four months, you need to complete the two prerequisite courses, academic writing and research method. So you are left with 14 months. Then minus again, you need to have at least two months to prepare for the turning in, to prepare for proofreading, to prepare submission to the office. So basically, you have more or less one year to prepare whole thing. Colloquium. Right? Colloquium for patients. Ah, and then colloquium some. After the first semester, second semester, colloquium, right? Okay. So, it's very, very fact and hectic. Next one. Viva. Okay. The earliest you can go for Viva. So for PhD, two years. If you finish your thesis within one and a half years, so we cannot give you Guinness World Record. You still need to wait for two years. Right? But normally, don't know people achieve this because the obstacles that we see here is publication. You need to have a paper published in order for you to gain eligibility to, to go for your Viva boost. Okay, so that earliest is two years. Okay, the maximum you can go is for five years. So don't think that we set a requirement saying that you need to go proposal defense in semester four. So you are done, your second year done, and then you take your own sweet time, two years data collection, then only analysis. No, you got maximum five years. So we are keep track on this. Okay. And then uh, for doctor by research for part-time, uh, part you got seven years. And then the rest master by research, three years and five years. That is the maximum period of study given. Uh. All right, next. 
Ah, uh, this is for coursework, right? So for full time, per semester you can go for four, maximum, uh, minimum, maximum you can go for five. Okay, but I think later on your um program chair will give you the respective study plan. Basically, they have plan for you. Which semester you need to take one? Okay, for part time, minimum one, maximum two. You cannot go for more. This is a requirement by the Malaysia uh, Quality Agency. Next. Okay, so this is this is the common grade given. All right, but I have to remind you that uh, there is a new policy being implemented now. Okay, uh, generally the distribution between your assignment loads and your final exam for postgraduate studies should be 70-30. So meaning to say, before you went for a final exam, you have accumulated 70 marks of your grades from your assignment. Then for your final exam, it's 30 marks. But now, there has been a new rule being implemented. I'm not sure when it will be effective, such that you need to pass both score. You get what I mean? Even though I say here that, okay, as long as you get 55 and above, you pass, right? So given the distribution between your assignment and final exam is 70, 30. So what happened? As long as you pass your assignment, more than 55, you pass, right? Final exam gets zero, never mind. Now, no. Okay? There is a minimum threshold mark that you need to pass. For example, 30%. Of your final exam, you need to score at least 15 to consider pass. So both of them need to pass. You pass your coursework, you fail your final exam, you still fail your subject. You know, there's no more promise saying that, ah, don't worry, lah. your assignment got 69, eh? you only got B, even your final exam got zero, no, no more. There's a new one. Okay, so you need to be aware that there is a minimum marks you need to score for assignments and final exam. For those subjects that is fully assignments, then probably we still follow this. Okay? Next. You can appeal for final exam uh, results if they're not happy, right? In, in written form two weeks, but I would like to inform that for this appeal, right, the process is not a recheck the marks. The process is only recalculate whether there's a mistake in calculation of marks. Because these of the lecturers, they have different way of marking. You cannot say that I, I, I mark more strict, then suddenly you appeal another lecturer who is more lenient and come and mark and give you higher marks. No. The process of appealing is just to relook whether there has been a miscalculation of marks. They are not going to reassess your answer. Right? Okay, and the charges is 100 ringgit. Lah. Next. Okay, so for coursework base, you need to ensure that every semester you score 3.0 and above. Okay, then you get conditional pass if your CGPA is 2.67 to 2.99. Next. So there are there are there are there are terms that you need to comply for coursework based. Huh? For first time you get less than three, we allows you to go. Second time you need to appeal. If continuously three semester less than 3.0, bye bye. We terminate you. Okay, so that is the general rules. Next. Okay, next. Okay, for research-based program, PhD and Master by Research, you need to take the two prerequisite uh, courses, Academic Writing and Research Methods. Both of them, you need to get at least a B. B minus, you need to repeat. Okay, have to get a B for both subjects, then only you are allowed to proceed with your PhD candidature, you are allowed to proceed for your colloquium, your PD and everything. If you get less than B, you need to repeat in the subsequent semester. Next. Right, then this is the rules and regulation for you in case you want to repeat the courses, lah, but many of you don't do that. Lah, huh? Okay, next. So for master's program, you will be awarded your degree when your final CGPA is more than three. Okay, 
For PhD and Master by Research, once you pass your viva, you are not guaranteed convocation yet until you submit your collection. And endorsed by the schools, by the university. That means to say, only once you get a Senate letter from the university, then only you can guarantee saying that, yeah, I now can ready for convocation. Because some have that, uh, uh, what we call it, some have the expectation saying that, well, I only passed my viva. But if you do not submit your correction on time, either minor for three months or major for within nine months, you still fail. You're still not eligible to get your competition. So correction is important, all right? Submission of correction on time for research-based program. Next. So any further questions, further information, you can look on the website, you can look, us, uh, look at us uh, or contact us through Facebook or email to us, all right? And these are all the extension number. The easiest way is always be in the university and come to the office and see us. All right. Um, before I wrap up my um, presentation, all right. Since you are a new students, right? So we would like to invite you. Okay, basically, uh, we at OLGSB occasionally we do what we call it as a CSR program. Okay. So this coming 21st of May, Tuesday, we are going to conduct a knowledge transfer program with one of the primary school. SK, primary school. One of the primary schools in this area, in Kuala Narak. Okay. We in this this graduate school normally we spend some time to to can I say to go to the B40 community? Yeah. Right? We spend time and do some service for for the lower income community in the surrounding area. Right? So on the 21st of May, Tuesday, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. We will be going to Kuala Narang, one of the primary Malay schools, Kuala Kebangsaan Tuala di Kuala Narang, untuk to do some activities with the students from standard one to standard six. So we are extending this invitation because we don't want just all these officers going. So we, we want <coughs> OER GSV students to go back and serve community. Is it okay? So those who are interested to join Tuesday, you can fill up the form there later. Okay? Or or what's to you? I'm sorry, you, you put the paper outside. Okay. Outside, yeah. So those of you who are free, mm. you'll put the, the, the form outside, you can fill up. Of course, international students are uh, you're most welcome. Because last year I bring two China students went to a uh, nearby uh, kindergarten. And they play with the kids as well, of course. Uh, don't expect them to be able to speak English. But you can teach them to speak Mandarin. I can be the translator, no problem. Right? Okay. So I'm extending this one. And of course, uh, somewhere in in Mila, in July, we'll have another one. Yeah, right? We'll have another one. But that one, we call it trash hero. We go and collect rubbish in the surrounding uh, 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 area as well. But, but, but that's in the plan. But this one is confirmed, 21st of May. So we really like you to join because they should be happy to see you. Lah. Right? And you should be proud to say, Kakak, Abang sudah belajar sampai master, adik kena belajar. You know what I mean is, uh, you see, and uh, now uh, 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 we, we are study so high already. So you, as a student, you must focus on your study. then become an excellent person in, in the near future. Is that okay? All right, so please register. Huh? I don't want to see empty boxes there, only my name here. Huh? <laughs> okay, so I think that's all from me. Thank you very much. Huh? Yeah, huh? Okay, I will just going to take like uh, two or three minutes. Eh? Okay, uh, first of all, uh, congratulations to all the students huh, for your acceptance into our academic programs. Mm -hmm. I think the Dean already mentioned about 
you know, our achievement and our ranking, etc. So I'm not going to talk about that. It's just that a reminder to all the students, eh? uh, you have to plan well your studies. Eh? This one I always mention in the most of my uh, sessions with the students. Eh? Uh, today, of course, you are excited. You are in uh, semester one. This is your first day. But based on our experience dealing with students, eh, postgraduate students, usually you don't have the same momentum or motivation as you progress. Yeah, first semester you are excited as you progress. We see some of them just go missing. Yeah. So my advice to all of you, especially those um, research students, eh, be master by research or PhD, make sure you have your milestone, yeah, your plan, yeah, and you have to diligently follow this plan. You must uh what you call a stick to the plan eh? this is the uh, rule of the game eh? so most of the students who are unable to complete your studies eh? because of this you don't have the discipline in your studies and let me tell you there are so many cases of students who quit halfway and there are cases where students ask for extension some of you already exceeded the maximum semester allowed so in that case we cannot approve eh? this one we have to table it at the uh, senate level high level uh, academic meeting and it's not easy okay uh, to get approval no? unless you show a convincing progress then only they will approve so i hope you don't end up you know uh, need to ask for extension or whatsoever yeah uh, so the, the the tips here is plan your study well make sure you have the milestone and for those research students, I know the first semester you need to take the two prerequisite courses, huh? your academic writing and uh, research methodology. Okay, what the trend, what the trend we are seeing is you'll be in the campus until you complete these two courses, even part-time or full-time, doesn't matter. After that, you go missing, most of them. Yeah? For the past few years, we have been observing this. Yeah? So if you are part-time, I know you're working and you are you have some other things to do, it's fine. But whenever you, you must make a point to come and meet your supervisor. Now, like what Dr. Francis mentioned, the supervisor will not follow up with you. No, that's your job to follow up with them, to always update yeah, your progress, yeah, what, what you're doing in this. Yeah, the, the supervisor will not look for you. So this is a very simple rule of the game yeah, when you want to do your uh, research. So that's the first. Second thing, I would like to uh, welcome all our students uh, from uh, Indonesia. I should have uh, 23 students here from uh, five universities under uh, UIM, isn't it? Yeah? Uh, uh, this one is, of course, uh, based on our agreement with Kamenak. Huh? So okay, can you raise your hands? Can I see you? Okay, welcome to UIM. This is a special cohort. Eh? A special cohort. And for your case, you are not allowed to change your program. Okay. Uh, like Dr. Francis mentioned, isn't it? You have opportunity to change in the first semester. That's only for them, not for you, because you are under the agreement. All right. That's number one. You are not allowed to change your program. Number two, you must finish within three semesters, meaning that one year. Uh, one year. So by next year, you should be able to complete. And uh, of course, your third semester, you will register for your research paper yeah? and you will have a supervisor. And fourth semester, you have to be back to your country. That's, that, that's a very simple agreement and you have to make sure you fulfill that. And we here will assist you eh, as much as possible to make sure that uh, you can complete within these semesters. Yeah? But of course, a lot of things you will deal with your school, uh, Islamic business school. But in terms of administrative matters, if you need any help, please come and uh, look for us. Yeah, Any help or any problem, even if any problem, come and see us. Yeah? We have a responsibility, both of us. Uh, you also have a, a duty here. I also have responsibility to make sure you complete within uh, three semesters. Yeah. So uh, I think uh, that's all uh, I have to uh, say here. Uh, because I think you have a session with your respective program uh, directors after this, yeah? until what? Uh, once again, I will come to you, M, and um, congratulations. Thank you.
Thank you so much, Prof. Uh, Dr. Francis, thank you so much for the <laughs> kind of crazy uh, uh, briefing just now. Okay, everyone's uh, laughing. Uh, hopefully, not just laughing. Can you remember that in your mind? Again, changing program is just for the local international student. You cannot change your program. And also, you have to be in full time only. Okay? Because this will affect your visa. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, for that, guys, after this, as mentioned by Prof. Subra, you will join the parallel academic briefing session with your respective program coordinators. Uh, QR code. Okay. Please scan this QR code uh, and download the schedule. This is the tentative. Actually, you have it uh, once you we, we in, in The link is in the postgraduate guideline, but it's okay. You can scan again and you get the full schedule for today. And later, uh, maybe after recess, uh, your your briefing with program creative may be end of at least at 1 30 to have a rest. Uh, and please join library briefing at 3 p.m. through online. So the link also in the schedule. So please scan and make sure to join the library uh, briefing. It will help you a lot. Okay, with that, uh, uh uh, we will end our session here. On behalf of uh, the Secretariat, once again, I would like to congratulate you all and would like to thank all of you for attending and enlivening our session today. Thank you very much. Uh, we would also uh, like to take this opportunity to apologize for any shortcomings. Uh, we will end this event with a photo session. Okay. I would like to invite everyone to come front for the photo session. Okay. So with that, I'm Nadia Rusli, signing off for now. Thank you, everyone. So please uh, come to your front. We will take photo of everybody. Yeah, uh, uh, for research student for master by research and post uh, PhD, please stay here. Uh, the briefing will be uh, here. For coursework, uh, please refer to the schedule. Okay. Uh, uh, can everyone come to the front so we can take pictures together? <laughs> I think the Then I will have a nice trip. Ready, side, please. All move over this side. All move over this side. All move over this side. One side. It's here. Yeah, I don't know. 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 I don't know.
Satu, dua, tiga, sekali lagi Satu, dua, tiga, freestyle Satu, dua, tiga, sekali lagi Satu, dua, tiga, tak Satu, dua, tiga Eh, betul-betul <laughs>